determine the oxidation states of the elements in the compounds listed. So remember, our oxidation state rules tell us that we know what hydrogen is and we know what oxygen is, except in a few instances. But hydrogen is always plus one, except with those few exceptions. And oxygen is almost always minus two. So if I have hydrogen um, is plus one, and there are three of them, and that gives me plus three from hydrogen and oxygen there are four and these are minus two and that gives me minus eight from oxygen so there's no charge on this compound because there's nothing over here as a subscript so that means the charges have to cancel out so if I have negative eight and positive three what do I need to make this cancel I need positive five so P must equal positive 5. Then I have plus 5 and plus 3 equals plus 8, and the oxygens give me minus 8. So P is plus 5, um, and oxygen and hydrogen, we usually know those. So let's look at this one, hydrogen. I have three hydrogens. So that's plus 3 again. We have three oxygens. And those are minus two each, so that's minus six. So what is aluminum? If these have to be balanced, it must be plus three. And I have plus three and plus three is plus six. Plus six and minus six is zero. And there's no charge here, charge of zero. All right, oxygen two times minus two equals minus four. Selenium one must be plus four, right? Minus four plus four equals zero. There's no charge. K, anything in the first column is plus one. O, oops, I'll do O down here. O, I have two of them times minus two equals minus four. So N must be plus 3. Plus 1 and plus 3 is plus 4. Plus 4 and minus 4 equals 0, the charge on this compound. All right, indium uh, sulfide. So sulfur is in this is in the same uh, column as oxygen. And when sulfur is in a compound with a metal, then it's going to be a negative 2 um, oxidation state, just like oxygen, because they're in the same, same column, then they have the same oxidation state. So sulfur is 3 times negative 2, negative 6. So indium. I have two of these, so they must be what in order to equal positive six? If I have two of them, then they must be plus three each. So indium equals plus three. So then I'd have plus three times two equals plus six, and plus six and minus six equals zero. Indicate what type or types of reaction each of the following represents. Okay, so the types of reactions that we've looked at so far are precipitation reactions, acid-base reactions, and redox reactions. So in a precipitation reaction, we're looking for a precipitate. And remember, a precipitate is a solid in the product side. So if I mix two aqueous solutions together in the reactant side, AQ plus AQ, and that makes something solid in the product side, then that is a precipitation reaction. So do we see any of those here? Let's see, AQ plus AQ makes something solid. 
So this is a precipitation reaction. And we can even go one step further and say this is the precipitate. This is what became solid. And these are my spectator ions. All right, so we've also looked at acid-base reactions. And an acid-base reaction is one that has an acid and a base, and they combine to make water. So remember, an acid is a compound that has an H in front of it. And a base is a compound that dissociates to make OH minus. So here, I see an H in front. This is an acid. And here is a compound with OH in it. This is a base. And here they've made water. So this is uh, from a neutralization reaction. So this is an acid-base reaction. All right, we've also looked at redox reactions. And how do we know if a redox reaction has occurred? Well, that happens when uh, compounds change their oxidation state. So in order to determine if compounds, if an element has changed its oxidation state in uh, a reaction like this, we have to look at the oxidation states of each element on each side. So H has an oxidation state of plus 1. O has an oxidation state of minus 2. An element, when it's all by itself, has an oxidation state of 0. So carbon here is just by itself, so the oxidation state of carbon on this side is zero. Over here, carbon is not by itself anymore, it's with oxygen. I know that oxygen is minus two, and this has a charge of zero, therefore carbon must be plus two. And hydrogen now is all by itself, it's just hydrogen. So if it's an element is all by itself, then it has an oxidation state of zero. So on this side, hydrogen was plus 1, and on this side, hydrogen is 0. On this side, carbon was 0, and on this side, carbon is plus 2. So in this reaction, elements have changed their oxidation state, and that only happens in a redox reaction. So this must be a redox reaction. A trick to locating a redox reaction is to find elements that are by themselves. Here's carbon all by itself. Here's hydrogen all by itself. If an element is by itself on one side of the reaction and it's not by itself on the other side of the reaction, then it must have changed oxidation states. And if that's true, then it must be a redox reaction. So let's look at this one. Here I have something that's a solid on this side and something that's a solid on this side. So sometimes when people see a solid in the product, they think, oh, this is a precipitation reaction. I've got a solid in the product, it must be precipitation. But that's not true if I started with a solid and then I have a solid over here. A precipitation reaction is where I have aqueous plus aqueous makes solid, not solid makes solid. So this is not a precipitation reaction. It's not an acid-base reaction because there's no acid. In this one, again, remember a good trick to locate a redox reaction is to um, identify elements that are all by themselves. Here's O2 gas all by itself, just an element by itself. That means that its oxidation state right here is zero, and its oxidation state on this side is negative two. So it changed oxidation states, so it must be a redox reaction. So on these redox reactions, we can also say, which element was oxidized and which element was reduced. So hydrogen goes from plus 1 to 0. So hydrogen was reduced. When um, an oxidation number goes down, then we say that that's reduced. Carbon went from 0 to plus 2. If an oxidation number goes up, then we say that that element was oxidized. So let's look at this one. Oxygen went from negative 2 to 0. So oxygen was oxidized. What was reduced in this one? 
Well, if we uh, try to figure out what chlorine is, here oxygen is negative two and I have three of them. So that gives me negative six altogether. Um, potassium is plus one. So if this is a neutral compound and there's no charge, then that means that chlorine must be plus five on this side. And what's chlorine on this side? Well, if potassium is plus one, then chlorine is minus one. So chlorine went from plus five to minus one. So chlorine was reduced. Balance each of the equations according to the half reaction method. So we have to break each of these into half reactions. And so to do that, we just find the two species that are the same element, Sn2+, plus, Sn4+. Plus. Just separate that one. And then here we have copper 2 plus and copper 1 plus. So which of these was reduced? The copper was reduced, because remember, redu reduction means the number goes down. So this went from a 2 down to a 1. So this was reduced. Tin was oxidized, because the number went up. It went from a 2 to a 4. So this one was oxidized. Um, in order to uh, go from a 2 plus to a 1 plus, then I need to add an electron on this side. Because remember, electrons are negative. So if I have negative plus a 2 plus, negative 1 plus 2 equals plus 1. So in order to turn copper 2 plus into copper 1 plus, I have to give it one electron. In order to turn copper 4 plus into copper 2 plus, I need to give it two electrons. So these numbers, the charges, should be equal on each side of the reaction. Minus one and plus two is equal to plus one. Plus four and minus two is equal to plus two. So the, num the charges should be equal on both sides of the reaction. And in a redox reaction, electrons should be on this side for an oxidation reaction. They should be products. And electrons should be on this side for a reduction reaction. They should be reactants. So now I have separated my reaction into half reactions. I've placed electrons where they're supposed to go in order to turn copper 2 plus into copper 1 plus. It needs an electron. And in order for copper 2 plus to turn to copper 4 plus, it has to lose two electrons. Now comes the balancing part. This process takes one electron. This process takes two electrons. So that's not balanced. So in order to balance it, I need to multiply this by two. Then I'll have two electrons plus two copper two plus makes two copper one plus. Now I've multiplied this together. All right, now my electrons are the same. This is where the balancing comes in when I'm balancing a redox reaction. I have to balance the electrons. So once the electrons are balanced, then I can cancel them out. Uh, just like in spectator ions, if I have something in a reactant and something in the product, the same thing, they cancel out. So I'll cancel out the electrons and then add these two reactions back together. Then I get Sn2 plus plus 2 copper 2 plus makes Sn4 plus plus 2 copper 1 plus. So in order to balance a redox reaction, I am 
not just balancing the elements because if I look at this reaction, the elements are already balanced. I have one tin on this side and I have one tin on this side. I have one copper on this side and one copper on this side. They're already balanced. So I'm not balancing the elements necessarily. I'm balancing the charges. This is two plus and two plus. So on this side, I have four plus. But over here, I have four plus and one plus. On this side, I have five plus. So this reaction is not balanced because the charges aren't balanced. But now, if we come down here, I have two plus and two times two. That's four plus. So two plus and four plus makes six plus on this side. And then four plus and two times one makes two plus. So six plus on this side. So by balancing the electrons like this, then I've had to add another copper. And by adding another copper, now I've balanced the charges. Now the charges are balanced here, even though they weren't balanced when we started. So that's the idea when I'm balancing redox reactions. So let's do the next one. Iron 3 plus goes to iron 2 plus, and I minus goes to I2. So for iron 3 plus to go to iron 2 plus, then it needs to gain one electron. Here, this is I1 minus, and I here, since this is iodine all by itself, and it doesn't have a charge, then this has an oxidation state of zero. All elements, when they're by themselves, have oxidation states of zero. So in order for, uh, well, first of all, let's recognize that I have two iodine atoms on this side and only one iodine atom on this side. So I need to balance the atoms first. Now that I've balanced the atoms, now I can start to worry about the charge. So if I have an iodine atom here, two iodine atoms, each of them are at zero. And over here I have two iodine atoms, each of them are at minus one. And that means I need two electrons to take zero down to negative one. So the electrons aren't balanced. So to balance them, I have to multiply this top equation by two, because then I'll have two electrons on top and two electrons on bottom. So when I do that, I'll get two electrons, two Fe3 plus, and two Fe2 plus. Now the electrons are balanced. Now they're both equal to two plus or excuse me, now there, I have two electrons on each side. So I can cancel them out, add the equations back together. And now let's check to make sure that the charges are balanced. 2, 3 plus makes 6 plus altogether. 6 plus. And 2 minus here for a total charge of 4 plus on this side. 2 times 2 gives me 4 plus here plus 0 for a total charge of 4 plus on this side. So now this equation is balanced. 